مدرسة الدوحة البريطانية مدرسة دولية مختلطة تستقبل الطلاب من الروضة إلى الصف الثالث عشر تقدم المدرسة المنهج البريطاني الأمر الذي يتيح للطلاب الفرصة لاستكمال المؤهلات الدولية لشهادة الثانوية العامة كما تقدم المدرسة برنامج دبلوم البكالوريا الدولية والمستوى الوطني المتقدم وبعدما شهدت مدينة الوكرة افتتاح حرم ابتدائي يضم طلاب رياض الأطفال حتى سن السابعة يتم حالياً إنشاء حرم جديد لطلاب المرحلة الثانوية في الوكرة أيضاً السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف أصبحتم؟ اليوم سنتحدث عن موضوع هام جداً ألا وهو نظام التعليم في العالم العربي عنوان اليوم التعليم في العالم العربي بين الواقع والمأمون بداية لدي سؤال ما دور التعليم في نهضة وتقدم الأمم؟ ما دور التعليم في نهضة وتقدم الأمم؟ تفضل محمود هو يصبح من أفضل العوامل الرئيسية في الدولة للبناء أو للتقدم والتطور جميل ها رأي ثاني تفضلي علي جميل اسمي شحاتة عبد الله محمد منسق اللغة العربية والدراسات الإسلامية بمدرسة الدوحة البريطانية أعمل هنا منذ عام 2004 نظام التعليم البريطاني يختلف تماما عن نظام التعليم العربي حيث لا يعتمد على مجرد التلقين او تلقين المعلومه بل يعتمد على الفهم والبحث والتحليل والاستنتاج وبالتالي النقطه الاساسيه في التعليم البريطاني هو تكوين شخصيه الطالب وبالتالي يتخرج طالب عنده قدره على ابداء الراي وجهه النظر مستقل يعتمد على نفسه هو تعليم من اجل الحياه وليس من اجل الاختبار التعليم يعتبر اللبنه أو الأساس في تطور أو تقدم أي دولة في العالم بدون تعليم لن تتطور أو تتقدم أي بلدة لأن التعليم هو الذي يبني الإنسان والإنسان هو الذي يبني الحضارة وبالتالي يبدأ من هنا دور أو أهمية التعليم في تطور وتقدم الأمم سنشاهد فيديو الآن لمدة دقيقتين يتحدث عن التعليم في العالم العربي أرجو منكم الانتباه لاستنتاج المعلومات لان سيتم المناقشه في مجموعات حول هذه المعلومات اتفقنا الان سنشاهد الفيديو تحدي طبعا اللغه من صفتها ان هي مكتسبه البيئه المحيطه بالطالب هنا كلها باللغه الانجليزيه وبالتالي كل المعلومات والمفردات التي يكتسبها الطالب انجليزيه طبعا بحيث ان انت تقدر تزيد او تنمي مفرداته اللغويه بالنسبه للغه العربيه هذا تحدي كبير وبالتالي بنحاول ندفع دايما الطالب للقراءة نعتمد على مصادر متعددة ممكن الكتب مكتبة خاصة باللغة العربية المدرسة بصراحة بتوفر كل الأدوات أو المصادر اللي بنحتاجها بنحاول نجد موضوعات مثيرة لاهتمام الطلاب في المراحل العمرية المختلفة يعني طلبة على مقبلين على المرحلة الجامعية بالتالي يهمون موضوعات خاصة بحياتهم كشباب يعني التعليم، الوظائف، البطاله اللي بتواجههم، المشاكل اللي بتواجههم في العمليات التعليميه. الموضوعات بتكون مفتوحه اكثر، حتى اختيار الكتب لابد ان هي تناسب المرحله العمريه اللي بنقوم بتدريسها. يحتاج نظام التعليم العربي الى اصلاحات عاجله. والحل هو ان مع هالمشاكل في السياسات التعليميه ولد ان يصلحون في السياسات التعليميه والاداره التربويه. وهناك قصور كبير في اعداد وتاهيل المعلمين وخلل فادح في المناهج التي تعتمد على الشكل النظري. 20% من اجمالي الانفاق الحكومي على التعليم خلال ال 40 سنه الماضيه. اسمي علي المفتاح الصف 11 مدرسه الدوحه البريطانيه. طبعا احب المدرسه هالمدرسه انا فيها من انا صغير من الصغر تتكلم عن الروضه وصف اول ونقلت من هالمدرسه ورجعت لها لاني احب الطلاب اللي فيها واحب المدرسين لانهم يحبون الطلاب ويبون الطلاب انه ينجحون وياخذون احسن درجات هذا ايضا حدث 
في اليابان عندما تدمرت من السونامي وعادت الحضارة بالتعليم ولكن ما زال معدل الأمية في الوطن العربي يماثل المعدل في دول شرق آسيا وأمريكا اللاتينية أنا أحب صف العربي ولا صف الرياضة صف العربي لأن طبعا عندنا أستاذ شحاتة من من الأساتذة القديمة يعني من زمان في المدرسة ودرسني ودرس أخوي قبلي وأحب صف الرياضة لأنها ممتعة وأحب أنا الرياضة أنا أفكر أن أتخرج من هالمدرسة يا بالأي أس اللي هو أدفانس ليفل يعتبر ثالث ثانوي أو الأي بي اللي هو ثالث ثانوي وفي فونديشن فونديشن يير وأفكر يعني أن بفكر إذا أسوي الأي أس ولا الأي بي وأتقدم أن أدرس قانون محاماة أو شيء في القانون يعني Right guys, Brownian motion. So, today we need to know what is Brownian motion. You guys need to be able to think about particles and how they move around in physics. So, imagine you're at a football game, but imagine all of the football players are invisible. If you blink every 15 seconds during the first part of the football game, what do you reckon you're going to see if the football players are invisible? Ali. Right, the ball's going to keep on moving all over the pitch. Is it going to go in a set pattern? No. no? What's it going to be? How would we describe that movement? My name is Harriet Pardu, and I teach at Doha British School, and I teach physics and science. Science is very uh, content heavy, and they have to learn a lot of knowledge, so we try and make the lessons as practical as possible so the students get as much hands-on experience with what they're learning about to make it easier for them to recall it in an exam. So the currents move in those particles in the water. We can't see the particles move in, but the particles moving in the water started pushing those pollen grains around in this random fashion that we don't know why it happens, how it happened, but they have, as Ashita said, kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy within those particles causes the pollen to move around. Same as with the football, when you can't see the football players, they're running around still when they're causing the ball to move. You guys are going to do an experiment today using milk and water and talcum powder and water. The different things at Doha British School compared to other schools that I've taught at is definitely having taught in English schools in England, coming here, the multicultural way of life and the respect that the students have for everyone, teachers, other students, people out in the wider community. It's a really, really nice thing that they have here compared to other schools which I've taught at. Happy kids, right? <laughs> okay. You're happy. Just say you're happy at school, yes? Yeah. yeah! My name is uh, Terry Maguire. I'm the principal of Doha British School. I've been here for seven years after previously being a principal of a school in, in Portugal. And before that, I was 12 years in Doha College. I came here. There were just more than 1,200 students in this school at the time. We're now 1880 and around that, around that number. Well, Doha British School is a special place. It's a, it's a very, it's a school that cares for its pupils first and foremost. If you see this school, you'll see a lot of happy children, a lot of children who are comfortable in the school. They've got no anxiety. They feel comfortable, and that's what we intend to pursue and to make sure that they they, they are fulfilled at the school. The uh, Academically, the school is very strong and getting stronger year by year. We recruit all of our teachers from the UK where possible, um, but we do have an international cohort of teachers as well. I think what's most significant about the school is really the, the broader range of activities that we, we offer to our children, our extracurricular activities programme, for example, our Model United Nations, our international award programme, 
many tips and visits, our, our performing arts, our participation in sports, etc., gives us a much broader uh, dimension for our students. Nobody knows what life's going to be like for kids in never mind 20 years time, 10 years time, 5 years time. Things are changing so rapidly and our function is to ensure, our core purpose is to ensure that all of our children get the very best that they can from this school whilst they're here. Whatever it is that we can offer them, that's our commitment to our children. The future for them is unknown, it's unpredictable, so what we do is we give them hopefully the skills that will enable them to cope and to thrive in a unpredictable society of the future. My name is Gaia. I go to the year six class in the Oryx International School. Anna, Ismi Ali, Hassan Ibrahim, Safar Rabah Libtidai, Min U Madrasi Sinha, Oryx International School. I like this school because every day we learn uh, new things, and my teacher is really kind and gentle. Our principal is really nice to us and uh, I meet a lot of new friends in here and I even learn how to speak English in the school. I love the school because I have a lot of fun and the best part of me is the sports and English and the break time. I want to become a journalist because I've always loved reading and writing. I want to tell the world to stop making war because it will not make the world a better place if we continue like this. So it's better for everyone to be friends, every country to be friends, so that will make the world better. Ready, set, go. My name is Roisin. I'm um, the early years leader here at Oryx International School. Oryx School is an international school for boys and girls and we have children here from all over the world. So we get to, the children get to experience meeting children from other countries, other nationalities, other cultures. The minute we're Foundation Stage 2, next year we will also have um, Foundation Stage 1. Um, but the minute my kids are 4 and 5, and it's a lot of interaction with the children in this age group. Um, a lot of it is about an enabling environment and uh, a learning rich environment for them. We provide a lot on the continuous provision and the resources. Arabic rhythms, you will, we will use the, the bass and the tone to remember our dooms and our tags. But in African drumming, we also use that, but we can also use our chanting. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to call, and then I want you to respond with the same thing using repetition. Okay, so listen to what I'm going to play, and then I want you to respond with the same thing. That's call and response. Listen, this one's a little bit harder. 
My name is Claire Marlowe and I teach music at Oryx International School. I teach um, general music education, um, so the importance is on not just uh, the instrumentation, but the, the theory behind music and how music interrelates together. Uh, so uh, focus on well music, mixing into their topics that they'll do in primary, um, so classical composers, but also like African music, Arabic rhythms. Music is, is quite special in the sense of um, the children really have to work together. They have to really listen to each other and um, with other subjects they can, even though they might do a lot of collaboration tasks, um, it really, when you're doing something creative, it really kind of highlights how well people can work together. What's the sound make? Good. Good. Now this one's got a special friend. Excellent. Another special friend. Excellent. Another special friend. Good. Let me see your tongue for this one. Good. Turn to your partner and say thank you. Lovely. What about this one? My name is Lee Myrna and I work at Oryx International School and I'm the year one teacher and I've also got responsibility for phonics. So phonics is um, very, very important for all children. It helps them with their word recognition. It helps them to blend words that they don't recognize. It also helps them with their comprehension in reading. So the system that we use currently at the moment is called Read Write Inc. And it is an approach that we use in teaching children sounds for the first time. Can we all see? Magnet eyes. Yes, Malik's got his magnet eyes working. Okay, special friend. Fred, uh, blending. Good, excellent. Let's have a look at the next one. Special friend. Blending. Excellent. Turn to your partner and say, good blending. I really enjoy teaching the school because there are so many children from all over the world. So in my class, for example, I've got 18 children and I've got 14 different nationalities. So I get to meet lots of people. I get to know about their cultures. I get to know about their nationalities, their language. What we're going to do, we're going to do a little game of Runner Reporter. Thumbs up, a little bit unsure, or thumbs down if you think you know how to play Runner Reporter. Give me a thumbs up, a little bit unsure, thumbs down. Three, two, one, show. Fantastic. Okay, one person is going to report, the other person is going to solve the sums. But I'm going to look for teamwork skills, and I'm going to look for really, really, really good collaborative teamwork within your little group. My name is uh, Francis Cassidy. I've been here two years at Oryx International and I'm currently teaching the Year 6 class. Teaching for me, uh, from my own personal experience, is something that should be uh, creative, engaging uh, and worthwhile and purposeful uh, for the children uh, at all times. Uh, it should be challenging as well for the children so that they feel a sense of accomplishment, uh, that they can push themselves beyond the barriers of their comfort zone so that they feel at the end of the lesson they've achieved something. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Three. Ah, ah, ah. Two, one, go, 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 report, report. Be careful, be careful. This is the first one. Time, go, your turn to go, your turn to go. I like to have my children up, up and moving about to be uh, engaged and it allows the children not to become uh, lethargic in their learning. They can, uh, move around the classroom, they can um, come and go as they please and it uh, gives the children a real sense of excitement in their learning and you can kind of sense that when you, when you watch it. Fantastic. Get the blood going? Yeah. Get the brains ticking? Yeah. Fantastic, okay. 
Should be, uh, we used all four operations there. Can anybody tell me what operations did we use? Don't shout out, put your thumbs in your chest. What operations did we use throughout that little, little game that we played at the start? Think. I'm Jorleth Medine and I'm the school principal. The school, it's a pretty unique school. Um, it was built by Qatar Airways for the employees of Qatar Airways. We've got a very um, strong community and everybody is part of that community. And we've, we've got a saying, there's an old African proverb that says that it takes a village to raise a child. So this is our village and in our village we've got me as the principal, I could be the chief. We've got um, parents, we've got teachers, we've got support staff, we've got students. So they're all part of our village and everybody's got an important part to play in ensuring each and every one of our students um, is successful. What do we want our children to be to look like when they finish their time with us here? Um, so what we say is that whenever they leave Oryx International School, they will be prepared for the next stage of their lives. Now that means that they have to be academically prepared. They need to read and to write, to count, to be able to do maths, to do science experiments. They need to be able to draw, to paint, to play football, to play sports, to play music. They need to know how to use a computer etc etc all of those academic skills but more important than that we also have our guiding principles one of those is centered around um, having positive attitudes for life the new campus um, it's amazing it's cost a lot of money to develop it will provide education for three-year-olds right up to 18 year olds so we've got facilities for technology, robotics, computer science, mathematics, physics, biology, chemistry, music. So if you can think what our children will be able to do now with those opportunities, that's the amazing thing about it.